Hello again and welcome back to the channel. With this episode, I thought we would take a look at EQing toms. Typically, toms are mic'd at the top, at the outside edge of the drum, with the mic angled toward the center. This helps the mic hear the attack of the stick hitting the drum. The Sennheiser E604 and the Shure SM57 are popular mic options for miking toms. The first thing we want to do when we start our sound check is to set the gain on the channel for each tom by getting to listen to each tom and adjusting our gain based on the input meter. I have a rack and a floor tom track here in our example. Once our gain is set, we should engage the high pass filter, also known as low cut, on the tom channels. And we might as well make sure that the EQ is engaged now as well. We want to adjust the high pass filter so that our mixer channel is only working with the deepest sound of the tom itself and not dealing with any surrounding stage wash that will sneak into the mic. The channel doesn't need to hear any low end beyond the low end of the tom. A simple way to set this is to bring the low cut control up until you hear it start to negatively impact the low end of the drum. and then just back it off a smidge. Small, higher pitched toms will have a higher high pass filter setting than deeper lower tuned drums. We can expect our rack tom high pass filter to be higher than our floor tom as we go from the higher pitched drums to the deeper drums. As we get to this point, we need to start thinking about our EQ concept and exactly what we're trying to achieve with our drum EQ. How aggressive do we need and want to be? What does the music call for? What are the drums naturally giving us? For a jazz mix, setting the gain and applying the high pass filter might be about all we need to do. But then for metal, we're probably going to be much more aggressive. And for everything else, it'll fall mostly somewhere in between. So let's get back to our drums. For this tutorial, I'm going to leave the default cue in place. The cue is the width of the filter point. When you're comfortable with EQing toms, you can experiment with the cue later, but the default setting is a good starting point for our purposes here. In general, a wide cue is more musical for sound shaping, while a narrow cue is more surgical for fixing specific problems or notching feedback. As part of our EQ setup, I'm going to change the low end to a low shelving EQ for this example, as shown here. With that housekeeping out of the way, we can start our drum EQ. As always, we should look to cut first. Typically, for a drum in a modern mix, we're going to want to cut something in the mid to low mid region. We can start around 300 hertz to 400 hertz, make a cut, and then sweep left or right to see what works sonically. The deeper the drum, the more likely that cut will skew lower. Listen closely as you make your changes. By taking this area away, we're leaving a naturally enhanced thud and smack in the drum. Once again, depending on our goal, we could be done and ready to move to the next tom. Or we could want to be, to some degree, more aggressive. So let's add some bottom. We know the dominant low end of our drum is going to be between our high pass filter point and our low mid cut. We can boost a few dB in that area and move that point left and right within that window to find something we like. This low end lift might lead us to tweak our low mid cut some more. Always use your ears as you make changes. As we hear and compare our floor tom, we'll take the same EQ approach with our floor tom. Always keeping in mind the volume and tonal balance between our toms.
If we want to get more aggressive with the attack on the drum, we can raise the high mid area and sweep left and right and find the area we like there. We're looking to emphasize the attack of the stick on the drum. We might need to do this even on our deeper drums, even if we don't do it on the higher toms. That way the attack doesn't get lost in the depth of the drum. Comparing toms as we go along helps us to keep our balance between the drums, both in level and in tone. And we can backtrack and tweak our settings more to help with that if we need to. If you still want to be more aggressive, we can add some high end. Set the filter point somewhere above our high mid attack range in the 6K range and sweep it a bit to the left and right to find the point we like. This will give the toms a bit of air and help to lift them a bit. The default on the Behringer High EQ is a high shell, and that is what I'm using here. But this could be a case where I might actually use the PEQ setting. So let's listen to what we've done and take the EQ in and out for comparison. If we had more toms, we would handle them all the same as we've handled our rack and floor tom here. Once you have the EQ dialed in on your toms, you can begin to add something like reverb. I talked about setting the gain at the beginning of this video. For more information about setting the gain on the Behringer X32 and the Midas M32, I'll leave a link above. I'll leave another link after that specifically for the XR18 and gain staging on that platform. I'll follow those with the link to my drum mixing playlist where there are videos for the kick, the snare, and reverb. If you like information like this, please like and subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, click the affiliate links in the text below to help support the channel, check out the other videos, and I will see you next time. <laughs>